Okay, we've met the concept that uh, hydrocarbon chains or organic molecules can have branching of them. So sm smaller, shorter groups attached to a longer chain. Okay, now in some cases those chains themselves can be uh, branched. Now most commonly we are going to encounter cases of uh, where we have propyl groups or butyl groups that have branching. Uh, because they're the most common and they're, most, and they're small, we have special names for those. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time in this video going through how we name this. Okay? So the simplest example, to, uh, simplest case to take is uh, this one here where we're looking at propyl. And we'll look at butyl in a moment. So this compound here on the left, you'd hopefully be able to name, okay? Based on the rules that you've had in previous lectures, you'd hopefully be able to call this propyl heptane. Okay? It's a propyl group attached to um, a heptane seven member chain. Okay. Now on the right here, we still have a propyl group. It's an isomer of propyl. Um, but it's still got three carbons in it. So the question becomes how do we deal with that? Okay. Well, if we look at the first one, we introduce basically we introduce a new bit of nomenclature that goes at the start. Okay, so for the, the first one, we call this N butyl. Okay, it's in italics. Sorry, N propyl rather. And this means that it's normal. Okay, it's a straight chain. Okay. On the other hand, on the right hand side one, we call this isopropyl. Okay. So this is isopropyl heptane in this case. Okay. And we could also talk about this being as I italics propyl heptane. Okay. Now iso comes from it comes from the Greek meaning equal. So if you th if you were to think about this chain here, okay, um, we've come up this branch and then we've split this equally. Okay. That's where the iso comes from. This is equally split. Okay, we'll see that again in a second. Okay, now we're going to look at the butyl. So we've met the concept that we could have N propyl or N chains, and we can have these isopropyl groups. Okay, the next most common one is going to be isomers of butane. Okay, so for this I'm just going to I'm not going to bother drawing uh, a chain. Instead, I'm going to just draw a little wiggly line, and hopefully you'll understand that that's just going to to another part of the molecule. Okay, and then I'm going to put on four carbon chain here. So we now have one, two, three, four carbons. Okay, and as you might expect, this is now. N butyl. I'm going to colour this as well. Okay, so we have an N butyl chain. Okay. Now, the next thing that we could do is we could do exactly as we sort of as we did uh, with the. As a propyl example, and we can split this chain at the end equally. Okay. So we now have one, two, three, four carbons. Okay. And we now have 
ISO U type. Okay. So we've used the same rule as we had before. We've split this equally. Remember the Greek word equal means ISO. We split this equally to give us our isobutyl group. Okay. What if this, this branching isn't on this carbon but on this carbon now? Let's have a look at that example. Or oh, that, that isomer. Okay, so where we have the, the chain that looks like this. Okay, again, it's a four carbon chain. One, two, three, four. Okay, this now makes what's called a secondary carbon atom. Okay, um, we'll cover that in, in more depth when we talk about functional uh, functional groups later on. But a secondary carbon atom basically has um, three things attached to it that are not hydrogen. Okay, so this has um, methyl group or this this propyl oh, this sorry ethyl group attached to it. So this is what we call sec butyl. Okay. Right. And finally, and the one that is perhaps most common to to encounter is when when we have the carbon and then three methyl groups coming off that red okay so they're all the same and this is called tert or tertiary butyl okay or tert butyl or simply t butyl For completeness, so I'll just change the secondary one as well. Okay, so those are sorry, running out of space. Those are the four isomers of butyl side chains. Okay, so we have this N butyl, that's a nice straight chain. We have the isobutyl, that's split equally at the end. Okay, remember the Greek word iso. We have secondary butyl, that's when we have one methyl group on the same carbon that we're attached to the rest of the chain one. Yes. And then we have this tertiary butyl group where we have essentially four things attached to one carbon, a tertiary carbon, no hydrogen is attached to it, and then we have these three methyl groups attached to it. Okay. These groups are very common and they will crop up. Okay. So um, they are worth worth learning. Okay, so we've had N propyl, isopropyl, N butyl, isobutyl, sec butyl, and tert butyl. Okay.